Can you tell us a bit about your role at Western Sydney University? Sure, so I'm the Chief Student Experience Officer and my roles are fairly broad uh, uh, and very interesting roles. So I oversee and responsible for student experience or customer experience as I like to call it. Um, also oversee a lot of the uh, service channels across, across the whole institution, um, as well as strategy, customer strategy, and uh, uh, a number of other facets of it as well. My observation is that probably after tourism, the, most, the industry sector that's been most impacted by the COVID-19 lockdowns has been the university sector. You said you came into the university as a change agent and, and that was thrust onto your plate. How has this changed the university? Um, yeah, it's interesting. I mean, uh, firstly, yes, the higher ed sector was uh, third biggest export earner behind travel and tourism. Uh, in a bizarre way, we've probably leapfrogged them now, even though we have problems ourselves for obvious reasons. Um, uh, how's it changed? It's interesting. The, the, the whole COVID situation has changed us in a number of ways. I led our uh, crisis management, or still lead our crisis management team and have for the last 14 months. That's been a fascinating journey. Um, fascinating, obviously, in that it's a hopefully once in a lifetime experience um, in a way that you never have. But one thing it taught us is that we can do things vastly different to how we've always done them. We can move incredibly quickly, we can make decisions very quickly, and we can innovate in a way that we would never have imagined. But Mike, that must be very confronting for a university, which, forgive me, probably is complacent. It's, it's had a way of operating for hundreds of years and suddenly it's being challenged. You know, a lot of in, internal employees would be, I feel very threatened by that, I would think. Um, yeah, it can be very confronting. It can also be very liberating. Mm. And it's been really interesting to see the way the institution has changed culturally and the appetite for change and innovation has grown because of it. And there's a lot of questioning now about the way we have done things in the past. And I think quite rightly too. Why, why do we do things? I think one thing that COVID's taught us is we've just made assumptions, particularly around risk. Mm. And if there's one thing we've proven is a lot of the stuff we used to do to mitigate against risk was a complete fallacy. Okay, so the heavy governance structures that we put in were actually an impost on the university being an effective organisation. I, I, I believe so. In fact, I think risk management if overdone, is a huge risk in itself, hmm. particularly when it comes to innovating and moving forward. What do you think, how do you think we can cement these ways of working? Because we're hearing sort of this sort of talk, how do we get people back to the office? You know, that yeah. old thing of how do we get back to the old ways of doing things? Yep. Can we retain these ways? Uh, we can, but it takes a lot of effort and it takes a lot of courage. Um, I, I, given my role and I guess given who I am within the institution, um, have been one very much on the front foot talking about what it is that we've done differently and the benefits that we've got from it and the importance of not losing that. And yes, you do revert back to old ways and you need to call it out and you need to resist it. And I think that's a leadership and a cultural challenge that we need to absolutely apply ourselves to. Mike, as the change agent for digital transformation in an organisation like the university, how do you engage with your stakeholders about what is the possibilities? They've obviously been enthused by what COVID has delivered, yep. but how do you open their minds to way we can extend this and take it further? Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a great question. It's a very interesting challenge, particularly in a sector that is a very established and you know, what you would say is a sector that hasn't really changed a lot over a, a long period of time. I think firstly, it's about providing context and particularly external context. What's happening in the world, um, the degree to which technology is not just transforming, but disrupting and, and, and turning on its head sectors, the way we operate, the way that we think and the expectations that consumers have, providing all of that and also competition and the risk of emerging competition. Now that's not something that universities have traditionally been good at doing because they haven't had to worry about it. So I think providing that context and, and providing a compelling view of what's happening in the world 
is a is a good starting but, point. But that's almost a reality check because it's all, all, always almost telling people that there's disruption on the horizon. So, you know, the business model of the university has changed quite significantly in the last 12 months. You don't have to go to a, th a lecture theatre and huge amounts of real estate and have somebody lecture to you. You can study online if you want to at your own convenience, you yeah. know. You can condense courses, all of these sorts of things that suit the customers better, but opens you up to a global uh, threats against you. Yeah, no, you're absolutely right. And I think it's the business model of higher education that's changing much more rapidly than the business model of a university, and that's the risk for universities. Mm. Um, you've got uh, commercial players now who are starting to bridge what they perceive to be a big gap in education, particularly in areas like technology. Yeah. So you've got the Googles and the Microsofts of the world coming in aggressively to fill that gap. Uh, Google on a sort of a course of coding course that they equate to a four-year degree. Or yeah, something. correct. So you can do a Google certificate in a number of different uh, disciplines, including coding. Take you eight or nine months, 900 bucks. They equate that to be the equivalent of a four-year degree and they're hiring on that basis. Now, that's just one example I could give many, but I think if that's not a canary in the coal mine for the traditional way of educating, I'm not sure what is. But you need to get your stakeholders alert to actually they've got to be on top of uh, d avoiding that disruption to them. Yeah, and, and without becoming a, a backyard psychologist, the, the challenge with that is you need to provide that context, but then you also need to provide an answer to it you, because if you create dissonance and you don't actually have a, an answer to the solution, yeah. you don't get very far. So you can't say the sky is falling in, the sky is falling in, you've got to think of alternatives. You've got to sort of, and part of that then is opening people's minds to what others are doing elsewhere and in different industries. Absolutely right. Um, uh, I, I am very uh, uh, cognizant of ensuring that I continue to reach out to, to other industries, other verticals. Um, you know, I think as a, as a sector, higher education has spent way too much time and continues to benchmarking against itself. Now, the bar's too low there, and that's not where change is coming from. So it's really important to reach out and to learn from the best in whatever aspect you're looking at.